All right. Oh, oops. <laughs> All right, can we all see and hear? Yes. All right. Um, Brenda, can you see the uh, YouTube page I have dragged into the screen? Yes. On my screen versus the camera? Yes, I can see it. All right. All right, I think I think we're good. If any more setup needs to happen, give me a shout. All right, um, I'll just cue that up. Uh, yeah. So, I'm fan. Half of you know me already. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, I'm fan. I. I'm here in St. John's. I moved here to uh, study folklore and I'm liking it. So I, here I am. <laughs> um, my academic background is in social documentation, uh, which basically is combining like humanities and media. And so um, I have a I, when I was doing that, I, I initially was really wanting to be in a filmmaker, did a lot of screenwriting, a lot of video editing, uh, miscellaneous media stuff, um, and, uh, and I'm a musician. So this is kind of my creative space, I suppose. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. Uh, I just wanted to make this workshop an opportunity to just start messing around with uh, audio editing. Uh, it's a you know just a two hour window of time, so um, there's a lot that's not going to be covered. So we're just going to focus on getting a sense of what's going on and then having. Um, hopefully at least a full hour to mess around with audio and do creative stuff. And I'll be here to help troubleshoot and um, share ideas and answer questions and things like that. Uh, we don't have a lot of people, which means lots of opportunity for personalization. So um, any, questions or ideas, just shoot them at me. Uh, yeah, so I guess next I'm just uh, would like to be introduced to you guys and kind of what your creative background is and what you're looking to get out of this. Go first. Go for it. Rachel. And I work here at each niche, and I'm not very audio savvy, but I want to be. I usually do the more traditional type of artwork, like painting and drawing and food making, but I think I want to like branch out to like performance and video work. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. All right. Sure. Um, my name is um, I know him personally from the music here in St. John's. I'm also a folklore student at Mon. Um, I'm more so focused on the traditional music, more so toy music recently. Um, with regards to recording and stuff, it's I, I've always had music in sound production. Because before I did folklore, I was actually studying music with CNA sound production program, but folklore just had more interest to me. Um, maybe down the road, I might make an album. Maybe I think this would be good to. Uh, Hopefully, we'll be on it. <laughs> but um, hopefully, this workshop can give me some insight as to what's going on. Yeah, for sure. And we're not going to be we're not going to be covering a lot of music stuff mm -hmm. or recording techniques. Um, but this is definitely stuff that applies to making music. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yeah, this would be good. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. And so I'm Allison. Um, yeah, my background's all around the place. Um, uh, my academic background's in the sciences, but I did a few years in film and also was more famous in the radio to produce um, in regard to the docs, the TV videos, and the kind of uh, but mainly I'm a poet and I also do a lot of exploring myself but I'm trying to see so I'm kind of interested in having another uh, uh, working project in or something. And I'm just looking at uh, possible ideas. So it might now be both uh, something that is both an audio uh, mm -hmm. to visual video. All right. Yeah, that is really cool. Um, awesome. And we're around to my cursor's on the wrong display, but uh, it's Brenda, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm oh, over here in on Ontario. Audio. Audio's okay, not here. coming out of the right place. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's me. That's my setting. One moment. <laughs> <laughs> do 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 do. We're going. All right. Talk now. Okay. Can you hear me? No, nope. okay, I need to go to these settings. Audio. Oh, that's the problem. Okay. Um, all right, now it should work. Can you hear me? Why is it not? Okay. It is my Zoom settings, but the Zoom settings are being janky. Like I'm, I'm putting the audio on and that's disappearing. I'm just gonna use my MacBook speakers. All right, try it now. Can you hear me? Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, my name is Brenda. I'm over here in Ontario right now. Um, my background is in architecture. Um, I'm an artist. I work a lot with textiles, um, but I'm really interested in making possibly short films in the future. So I'm excited about this demo, just getting into some audio and stuff. All right. Yeah, um, definitely applicable to uh, video. Um, most of my most of my sound experience is in music and video. Um, so love to hear it. Um, what area of Ontario, if you don't mind me asking? I've been uh, like Kitchener, Waterloo, so central, south, central Ontario. <laughs> yeah, Ontario is the only province outside of here that I know more than like one place, but also it is very big, so. Um, West of right. Toronto. <laughs> Yeah, that's out there. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to kick this off with showing a couple examples of stuff that I've done. Um, this is a friend's animation demo reel that I did some music for. And um this is a little more music-y than straight art -y, but it uses a lot of the same kind of stuff. Um, so just a, a sample here. See if this audio is gonna work. It is not. Um, is the sound on for the projector? I definitely need to go to my second. 
Yeah, I thought I did that, but let me check here. Where my cursor go? There it is. Give me my cursor back. You know, I haven't been Minecraft for some years. I just know what I just know what you want to try. I haven't been Minecraft for some years. You're still from 80. Anybody else? I appreciate it. Yeah. I just saw something on the news like Bunny made the whole universe mm -hmm. and recreated it. So it's very impressive. Mm -hmm. That's what I That's like, you know, I can never get into a big wrong for like anything like that. Mm -hmm. This projector is intense. I know. I know. <laughs> um let me sound settings from the I just can't get my cursor to leave the projector and go to um, you can split your screen though if it comes up on these or you have it split. I do have it split, but it's not oh that's why that's I know why it's doing this. Yeah it's because there's a very small window where <laughs> that happens. Yeah that's why. Okay. <laughs> Um, but we're pretty low key today, so it's not a huge deal. Yeah, possibly. Yes. Is this Ben Q or yes. E? Try All right, let's try that. All right. Do we have sound? Nope. Well, you want thank you before? I was, yeah, but I was trying a couple of things here. Speaker that we can pass to. Okay, and now we'll just try BenQ one more time. And yep, it's working. All right. Cool. <laughs> oh, Really. I think it'll be okay. I just dropped the quality down. So. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. So I'll just play it off of my audio file. It's more fun to see things, but. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the an animation demo reel a friend of mine did that I did sound for. Okay, uh, it is in this folder. Goodness. No, it's with the. Uh, no, it, there's a connection issue. Oh, excuse my laptop speakers. And uh, we can troubleshoot that another time. Yeah. Well, no. Also, um, I'm a fan of just 
classic three and a three and a half millimeter plug into your headphone jack options. <laughs> So this is um, this is different software. I just wanted to show you what I what I normally use and what I did to make that. Um, this is uh, Logic Pro 10. Um, and sorry, I just took a picture of this <laughs> That's all right. So just kind of to see what what was going on there to get kind of a look inside the kind of the thought process. Um, I wanted to match the visuals and I wanted something that was a little, a little cozy, but also a little somewhat ethereal and kind of uh, earthy feeling. So uh, I used a lot of samples and manipulation like this is just a recording of um, trees creaking in the wind. Um, as like a textural element. Yeah, that's totally what I'm going for that. Yeah. It's like caves to me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, you know, this is a, just some, I recorded it raining one day. It was just raining really hard. Just little effects like that. Mm -hmm. But is it possible to share your screen with me? Oh, <laughs> well, good catch! Thank you. Oh, because you can see that there. All right, there we go. I just paused when I was troubleshooting, but we're back now. Um, uh, I got some. This is just from a random TikTok, right? A guy said, we, and I thought it. Mm -hmm. yes. So there's lots of things like that one can do to just kind of create textures. Um, like uh, this ambient layer, for instance. This is... I don't remember which instrument, um, but I put reverb on it, and that's just the reverb. All right, we can't hear the sounds. Um, Sorry, I could hear it just now. It something is working. <laughs> is it working now? Oh, it's probably because yeah. I paused the share. All right, awesome. Thanks for letting us know. I'll try and watch the the chat more closely. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of the, you know, a thing I did. Also, one if you're creative, one can make stuff happen just by like, I wanted a good cymbal sound and I didn't have like a, a high quality sample library. So I just found a music store that was demoing their cymbals on YouTube and 
downloaded that from YouTube, which reminds me, um, did we get that um, folder sent out? Oh, I'm just going to show you guys. I sent it to Brenda. All right, I can just, uh, do you get text on there? Yeah. Yeah. I always said, like, what? Yes, <laughs> text. <laughs> Probably my phone. So you know, I see the text on my phone. Email to Alton. What's your email? Uh, reading at Okay, I like that. Over. Rogers. at nl.rogers. All right. So this is just like a Google Drive folder with a handout and some resources, um, and also the files I'm working with here. So you can kind of mess with the same ones. Um, when we get into audacity, which we're ready for, I think. Yeah. In the meantime, um, I kind I whipped together. Oh, I wonder if that. Oh, I see. Um, I whipped together a kind of a demo project in audacity. Uh, kind of basic. But all right. Mm -hmm. Brenda, I sent you an email. Okay. All right. Yep, I have the cool. All right. So this is Audacity. Um should I should we open the TMP one or the one with the headphones? Effect demo. Demo. So this is uh can't this can Zoom is hiding the thing. I think I can. This is working with sound. Um, but don't need to open it yet if you don't want, or you don't have to open it at all if you don't want, but <laughs> well that's weird. I downloaded it and now it's come up on YouTube saying download. So um, I'm I'm just going to I, I will kind of walk you through a couple of things yeah. and then I will start running around and um, making sure everybody's set up. This is what I um, yeah. So I'll just play this now. I'll talk about it. You're going to play from the beginning? I tell you, Audacity is great um, because it can do a lot of stuff and it's free, but I mostly use other software, so I find it a little annoying. Like, are you using a Logic Pro? It's like four hundred dollars Logic Pro. Um, so it's it's two hundred dollars, I think. <laughs> but Apple has an under um, Apple has an under advertised uh, education discount where you can get yes. Logic, Final Cut main stage motion um there's another one but all of their video and audio stuff yeah you only have to prove your you just have to give your email right like your school email. yeah and then you can get all of that for two hundred dollars and it's like six hundred dollars worth of software can you send me the link to that i don't know where the link is at this point it's been years so i can find it for you if you like would probably be faster if you yeah, I'll ask you after. Have you ever used Cool Edit Pro? Is that? I, I have not. Is that video? Um, no. Um, that was another one that was there years ago. And was... Yeah, for audio these days, um, Audacity is like the standard for free. So it's called Logic Pro, right? Logic Pro 10, yeah. Anyway, here we go.
I know what I did wrong. Uh. do a like audio art project. I mean, I'm sure you can come up with more. Why is this crashing again? But, um, oh, there we go. I'm gonna close these other things just to make sure it's running optimally. Um, so one, like, one thing is um, like what you were talking about, Allison, with kind of like creating an atmosphere kind of sounds like something you were talking about with the poetry. Um, so like, especially if you're working with um, either setting a scene in a film context or like creating an ambience for an installation or a performance or something, um, just kind of creating a mood texture. And the other idea would be to uh, make more of a. <laughs> no, it's all right. Go out that way, take a left, and then take another left until you see that one. So we'll take notes. Yeah, not. The other thing one can do is create a story. Um, and in this context, I use the idea of story very loosely. Um, you know, you could think about a three act structure or not, but, or anything like that. But in this context, I think of it as it starts one way, there's progression over time where change happens in the middle and then you get to the end. And to me, that's kind of the core of what a story is. You start somewhere, something happens, you end up in some sense at a, at a different point. So I was kind of trying to give examples of both of those with this more or less, create a texture and have a build up towards some sort of sense of change. Um, so my process with this is I started creating sounds that were a little moody or unsettling and I also collected sounds that were more comforting and layered them to sort of transition into each other. Um, so I will break down these elements. Uh, I don't wanna get to the really exciting stuff um, while Ryan's out, but <laughs> oh yeah, you snooze, you lose, maybe. Um, so actually, I think I'll take this opportunity to uh, try and get you guys set up. Yeah, cool. So I'll just go out of here and roll. Okay, again. So I had downloaded from the ship, so I'm just gonna. All right, so the open. And did you get? And that's from Rachel. Rachel. Sorry. And did you get the link from Rachel? Uh, I think it would have been a no. When you download it, what? No. Oh, oh, you just sent now. Oh, okay. So, what's in here? Yes, it's all right. So, I think it's the same thing. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. What's in there are the project files I'm working with and some audio that that I use that you can edit yourself as well as the handout. The only thing you really need is the handout. Um, because I will be covering collecting your own files and making your own project from scratch. Um, so that might be an easier way to do things. Would you guys rather follow along with all of the same files I have, or would you rather 
not worry about download speeds and stuff and just get into it. I think my file now. So you want me to open the folder? Yeah, is that right? Maybe we should run through it together first. And then once we get the base gist definition. Is that all we have to answer? Okay, so what am I looking at? Which one do you want me to open? So the I um, probably sound made out. Okay. Why don't we download the, the whole folder here? Because I know it all. And it might take a little bit, but there's still things to talk about. And then once that's downloaded, it should be easy to yeah. open and navigate. Yeah. Yep, you just uh you yeah. it's preparing it, um putting it to a little yeah. folder and then we'll download. Mm -hmm. Brenda, were you able to download those files? Mm, yes. I think my picture is frozen, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I look really unhappy, but I'm fine over here. It's okay. I have an eye on the chat from here. All right, everything's downloaded for you. You're downloading. Okay, let's stop. Again, if you find this well, okay, then it's on the back of the phone. It's installed. Sure. Um, it's a new desktop, right? It'll be yeah. a zip folder. Downloads. Um, See, she comes up over here, so it's either this one unconfirmed. That's it. Okay. If it's unconfirmed, it will still be open. I don't think it can open. Let's see what can. That's not what this called, but it's the best. Okay, so hit my hook. So let's see if we can download. Okay. Um, not mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back and try to find it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So um, if you click on. Let's have a bit of space on this computer. <laughs> oh, there. That's another so issue. It's still oh, okay. Oh. Once it's just one that thing, I need to settle. Right on. I just guess it's closed. There we go. Now, look at the Oh, it's here. Okay. And is it click extract all? Extract all at the top there because it's in a press folder. Okay. Um, you right click it, you want to just go back and click it. And that'll just be on the desktop. Okay. Then we ready to click extract. Now, if you open the folder, perfect. Okay, so um, first open the sound handout because that will be useful to reference while we're working. And um, now go back to the and now if you want to look at what I'm looking at. Click, work, click on working with sound in that project there. And then theoretically, it should perfect. Don't mind this piece. <laughs> <laughs> it started off really, really small, it kept growing. Yeah, but it stopped. And I was just like, I'm not getting another screen. <laughs> um, All right, and now just 
So should I close this? The well. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah. Okay. Close that. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah, Ryan, do you know where to? <laughs> All right. Uh, and how are you doing there, Brenda? Um, good. I have the same file that you have open right now. All right. Perfect. So I'll just kind of break down what these layers are and don't worry about following along too closely because I will be um, I will be breaking it all down uh, presently. Uh, where's my cursor? Here we go. So the first thing I started with was uh, okay, it's not really happy with probably it's the trying to do zoom and this at the same time, but um, I will I'll just maybe be a little bit slow sometimes. Actually, I might be able to improve this if I just increase the buffer here. Do multi line up there to soften where you know it's got to minimize or something. And I'm like, oh, that's true. Yeah. So, so the first thing I did was I needed somewhere to start. So I just went to the website for um, for this workshop and I, I downloaded that web page as an HTML file. Um, and so, yeah, that's literally, literally just downloaded the HTML file. And one of the really unique things about Audacity is it allows you to open any old digital file you want and open it as if it's an audio file. And it basically makes an audio file out of anything. So you do have a video with audio file. Did you take the audio? So not, a, I mean, if you take the audio away from a video, you can use that. But what I mean is I downloaded this web page and um, I went into here, went to file, import, and clicked on raw data. And you can open any file if you click on raw data and it creates an audio file out of it. Um, and this is what I got. I'm just gonna solo that. <laughs> and that's what that web page sounds like. <laughs> right? Oh wow. Okay. But um so it's a text file, but it yes. But it makes some because every every file that you open is um, basically any file is a text file, um, but the computer interprets the text in different ways depending on what the file type is. So it just opens up the raw code of a file and processes it as if it was an audio file, even though it's not. Oh, that is so interesting. Um, and we're all these muted. So, yeah, and, and that's really fun for like, it's mangled beyond all recognition, but it's really fun for like thematic things. Um, you know, <laughs> well, now you can find out. Um, so yeah. Basically, I took that audio and I stretched it out 
and I ended up with this. Right, and it, it, this sounds this sounds like a a bit like a kettle, partially because I added other processing to it to make it a little more crispy. Um, and I also have this layer, which is the same thing, but processed differently. Can't really hear it super well because it's and it goes along with this. So together, I created. This is this is all from that one page. So I was able to just start with that page and pretty quickly create an interesting atmosphere. Um, this file, I did something similar where I took a recording of a organ. And I took a little tiny snippet. I slowed it way down. The process of slowing it down brought the pitch impossibly low. So I had to pitch that back up. And we end up with this weird bass thing. Um, and that, and those are kind of create that sort of unsettling texture. I used a different stretch effect on the organ uh, that doesn't affect the pitch to, you know, sounds like an organ because it is. I just made it really slow. Uh, um, but basically there's, there's um, under effects, there's different effects for that. So change speed is the one where you stretch it or shrink it, but it alters the pitch as if you're using a tape machine. Um, and Paul stretch is the one where it doesn't affect the pitch. And this layer is the same thing. And the last thing was just a... You went under effect, right? Yes. Can you just go back in a second? At the top effect. Okay, so yours are just all listed out, whereas ours... Oh, yes, you have here. to have a piece of audio selected for you to be able to see those. So like if I deselect okay. everything and click it, um, well, I don't, I don't know why it's not grayed out now. Oh, because of that. So if I try to do... Is it, do you mean like small like that? Yeah, mine. How do I have yeah. yeah. There's see, something that it just you've makes got it smaller. Mm -hmm. like Where are you? You would go to like fade and the little arrow will open and fall off. So yeah, yours is the yeah, those are the yeah. Oh, I see. So on, on Windows, it's in folders. No, it's in folders in the Mac. Really? Is that like a new update? Uh, it, I don't think it's new. It may so I have it clicked on the sample stretch organ. <laughs> And then under effect, but I've only got a few. I don't have anything like that. I only have bombs. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but when you go, so like, when you pop up over the fading, do you get more options? Yeah. So I, so, I tell you okay, what. So what you, then how can you select so many things? They're the same, but for some reason, it's just all listed. It might be because of a pro, like he has a map of pro. Um, no, that's not it. It's, oh. Okay. It's just my, it's, it's probably my version of the software. Same thing. It's just, we got to go through. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the last element I have here is just a recording of birds and water from back home that I had. That I had recorded. And so those layered together with a couple of fade ins and fade outs resulted in what, what you heard. Um, and so looking at the time, what I'm gonna do next is we're not gonna, I'm just gonna show you a couple things without you guys jumping in yet. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Before, when you 
So when you said you can put any file, it has to be an HTML file? No, any file. So any text, it could be a word. Doesn't have to be text. With the raw data file, you could you could import anything. Like is a photo, an application, a text file. Okay. Yeah. Just looking at the code. Yeah, basically, basically with that feature, <laughs> I know. Basically, that feature that import raw data, that just says ignore, um, ignore the file type, pretend it's an audio file, and whatever garbage comes out comes out. Yeah, <laughs> and that. That also is kind of a really fun entry into the world of like data moshing and glitch art, where you're intentionally just taking perfectly good media files and just fucking them up on purpose, um, which is a lot of fun. So what I'd like to do now, I'm sorry, is there I said, more? Yeah. Okay, yeah, <laughs> no worries. So what I'd like to do now is I'm just going to uh, crash through some different effects to show some of the possibilities. And you may not, I'm just going to sort of barge through it. I don't know if it's going to stick in your brain or not, but once I've done that, we'll be ready to just get hands on and mess around and I'll run around and help people out all that kind of thing. All right, so it's gonna go, yeah. Where is it, okay. All right, so that's just a base. I created this these sounds by just clicking generate, chirp, and messing around with the options. And that's one way to make sounds. I can go over that in more detail shortly if you'd like. Um, right, so change pitch. Uh, you select the audio. Change pitch is pretty self-explanatory. Um, you click it and then you either use the slider to change the amount of pitch altering or you can do it by um, like half steps or whatever if you're being musical about it. Change speed um, allows you to speed it up and slow it down but it does affect the pitch. So like if I make it really fast, it's not really short, but it'll also be sound like that. <laughs> uh, change pitch. Um, yeah, I think I'll delay, skipping ahead a little here. Delay takes a signal and gives you repeats of it. Um, kind of an echoing effect. There is an effect in there called echo, which delay and echo are slightly different flavors of the same concept. Uh, let's space these, uh, uh, let's say two seconds. So this delay level per echo, that's how much the sound decreases as it repeats. So, um, amount of echoes, you can have each echo have a different pitch. But if I do that, it, this little blip now sounds like. <laughs> um, we have compressor, which takes a while to get a hang on, but it's a really powerful one to know because um, it really lets you get in there and control the character of a sound. 
what it does is it um, there's a, a threshold, and anything above that threshold, it will reduce the sound of the volume of by a certain amount based on the ratio. And there's you know little bits more to it, but that's that's the basic concept. So if you watch these, this essentially is a graph of how loud it is over time. So if I apply that, you can see how the louder ones got squished down without affecting the quieter delays. So I'll undo that. So you can see those, when I apply it, those get smaller, but like this one stays the same size. Um, and uh, fade in and fade out are self-explanatory. So is reverse. Clicking reverse just reverses a selected clip of audio. Uh, what's the other one I wanted to show? Um, let's go with this one. The EQ is another important one. Both EQs more or less do the same thing. I prefer the filter curve. Oh, yeah, sorry. And notice with all of these effects, um, with all of these effects, when I click on something, there's a little question mark there. And if you click that, it'll take you right to the user manual for Audacity, the entry about that effect. So if you're messing around and you have any questions, um, I mean, I'm here, but you know, also when you're on your own, that's handy. So an, an EQ basically allows you to take, you know, it's like a graph. The low pitches are here, the high pitches are here. You can bring down the low pitches while leaving the high pitches intact or vice versa. And it really allows you to remove or emphasize elements of your audio clip. So like if I apply this, um, it's, it's much higher pitched because I cut out all of the lower pitches. Um, are you able to see all the effects you've done on each sound or go in and re-edit it? So that's, that's one of the things that I don't like so much about Audacity is basically the way this works is when you click on a audio clip, um, you know, this is probably a good segue to talking about clips versus tracks. So these are audio clips. This is a clip, this is a clip. They're two different clips, but they're in the same track. With this track, you can adjust the panning. So, you know, if you've stereo speakers set up, whether it's you hear it on the left or the right and the volume, and you can click mute or solo. So when you're playing it back, solo will only play back clip you, the track that you've soloed, and mute is the opposite, where it mutes that track. Um, but out of the box, I don't know if plugins can change this because Audacity is open source, so there's a million things you can do with different plugins, um, a little research. But does the play button on top, that just plays well. Yes. But um, when you apply an effect, it applies it to an audio clip. And as far as I know, it bakes it in. Like it applies that effect and you can't go back and change that or see what effects have been applied. Like you can't like turn it After the fact. I haven't, I haven't found a way to do that with Audacity. So it's a little more direct. It's almost a little bit more like working with tape that way, um, where it kind of forces you to be a little more confident about your decisions, mm. which can be nice, but 
So once you edited it, that's it? Pretty much. Wow. But um, if you save different versions of it as you go, it makes it a lot easier to go back. Also, but one thing. If, if, if you've got like multi clips and multi tracks, that when you're saying save, it would be to save the entire. Yes. File, right. The entire project. Right. So. Another. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You, you have to watch your yeah. file management. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but another thing you can do is like with this track, say I want to like, here's the Paul stretch effect, which allows you to stretch something out without affecting the pitch. I'm gonna do a factor of five, make it five times longer, but maybe I don't wanna do that right away. And I might, um, use the, I might go to edit, duplicate and mute the original so it's not in the way. And then I can do whatever I want to this because I have a version of it back there. Oh. So that's kind of a way you can mitigate yeah. that. Yeah. Most audio software. So um, then you were, sorry for buttoning, but when you do that, then you were, you were taking up a track with a duplicate. Yeah, because you only have presumably how many tracks? You have, I don't know. If, I don't think there's a track limit. Oh, okay. The track limit with this is probably however many it takes for your computer to catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, most audio software okay. and video editing software will, however, um, whenever you apply effects, you can look at the track and it'll show you each effect, and you can go back and edit them and rearrange okay. them. And that's one of the reasons why I much prefer Logic Pro. But for free, get your hands dirty, get really physical with the audio. Um, you can't really beat Audacity for just jumping in the deep end and, and creating stuff. So if you were to make like a full length album, would, would you grab, would you recommend Odyssey or Logic Pro? If it depends on what your needs are. Um, so like if you have a Mac, GarageBand for getting started is honestly like, it actually is good. It doesn't do everything, but it sounds great. And it's got some harder to find ways to get really powerful features. Um, Reaper's really good. I haven't really used it. Um, Reaper costs about $50, but it's a one-time payment. So a lot of people use that as a kind of middle ground where it's not as much of an investment as like multiple hundred dollar audio software, but um, like you can still do professional audio and music production with it. Um, yeah, so there's there's a handful of interfaces if you're serious about recording music. And Audacity is perfectly fine, but if you're doing anything more than just like basic recording, it, it will be frustrating. However, with you doing folk stuff, if you find you like Audacity, um, since that's just, if you're just recording acoustic instruments, um, it works fine. But the people who are really hardcore with Audacity and do lots of big projects, I think they customize it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, at the least I would. The duplicate uh, possibility there is good. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> often it's right. fun to do that. And I mentioned this in the handout, um, it's often very useful to like duplicate a clip like that and have effects on one and either no or different effects on the other and kind of combine them as a hybrid sound. Um, let's see, are there other effects I need to touch on? Reverb, Do, does everyone know what reverb is? 
yeah, it's pretty, you know, you kind of have to monkey around to get used to these different settings, but it just makes it reverby. Um, adjustable fade is good for fading clips in and out, but this will fade across the entire clip like so. So you kind of have to trim off a section to fade if you only want to fade in a little bit. So you could click here, for instance, and either command or control if you're using PC, I, or right click and go down and just split that clip. And again, I can cover all of this in a moment as people want. And then you can apply your fade. Um, and have it not affect the whole thing. Um, let's see, I already talked about delay. Okay, so that's when you've got two mm -hmm. Limiter's really okay. useful. Um, or just like just two leading voices right now. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. A limiter is especially useful if you're doing experimentation that can create loud, janky sounds. You see this meter up here? Um, limiter, it'll, prob it'll probably be something that says dynamics or levels or gain. Yeah. Distortion, No. It'll have something to do with volume. volume. Yeah. Volume. So you pick. So this slider, you can pull it down to the point where you want that to be the limit of how loud your audio clip is. And once you apply that, it'll prevent it from getting any louder. So you can use that as a hard stop to keep things from getting too loud. Because it gets too loud, the the quality starts getting really crackly and gross, and sometimes can cause damage to equipment. You to watch levels. You there's a little meter up there, and you don't really want it hitting zero. In fact, that's a little loud. Ideally, you want it you want it hitting closer to negative twelve, negative six. And I just adjusted that track volume with this little slider right there. Um, let's see, here's a little tools panel. You know, uh, oh, there's tools I haven't dug into yet. I guess it is a lot of just working around time stuff and then moving stuff. Yes, and, and, and This must have a huge manual. <laughs> yeah. The nice thing though about the manual is it's a lot like it's a lot like Wikipedia in the way it's laid out and oh, the nice. way it looks. So instead of having to scroll through the whole thing, you're sitting there like, how do I edit the clip length and trim it and combine it and stuff like that? You can just click on the editing section in the manual. Or you're like, how do the effects really work again? You can click on the effects section and all that kind of thing. All right. At this point, I want to, since we kind of ate up a bunch of time, but this is a really big, really big uh, concept. So I'm just really trying to throw you in the deep end and be there to stop you from drowning is the, the goal here. Um, so. All right, so where's my cursor here? Okay. And the last thing I wanna talk about before just getting hands on is um, 
the, the difference between the project file and the audio file. So I like I would keep your audio files that you're editing when you download a file to edit with. Make sure you keep track of those. I would put them all in a folder together. Um, so like, where's my, here we go. So like this is the folder that I sent to you guys. Um, we have the project files, the handout, um, the demo project audio file, and the files I use that I manipulated to make that project. Um, so I'm just keeping them all together in a folder because otherwise things can get really messy, especially if you're saving different iterations of a project. Mm -hmm. Also, it's very easy, as a side note, if you're doing different iterations of a project, it's very easy to make like rough draft, fine draft, final draft, and then you do another edit, and then you have final draft like two, two and then you've got like really final drafts. And, yeah. and next thing you know, it's just unmanageable. So what, what I usually do, if I'm not just making a little demo with any project, like even if it's just a paper or something, is I'll just like call it 01. And then the next version is 02. And the next time I save it, so three and so forth. Um, so just a little tidbit for you. And yeah, so the AUP3 is your project file. You click that to get into this environment, but it is not your audio file. So if you're trying to like make a finished product that you send to someone, you want to come out with a WAV file or an MP3, something like that, which when your project is finished, you can just go to file, export, and then click your file type. What's the difference between WAV and Versus an MP3? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> um, an MP3 is compressed. And you can play with the settings. A good MP3 um, is great for almost everything. Um, if you're doing like a quality production, it would be better to go with Wave. Um, and like if you're editing, you want to edit with the best material as possible. So like if I'm doing like with a short film, for instance, I would try and use Wave as much as possible when I'm editing and do uncompressed everything. But when I finish the project, since I, I started with the best stuff, but once that's all ready and tied up with a bow, then I will make my compressed versions for uploading, sharing, et cetera, because higher quality means bigger file. So a WAV file will be like about 10 times larger. I'm doing, say I have a separate animation video file. Can I say it as an MP3 once it's all done and then lay it over the video file? Or should I put that as a It depends on what you're doing really. Um, a good MP3 is almost indistinguishable. Yeah. Um, so if you're worried about space, or if it's something where you're doing a lot of file sharing with someone, or if it's not a major part of the project, the MP3 might be good. But generally speaking, you want to edit with the highest quality you can. And then when you're ready to present your material to the final audience, then you select your file type based on um, based on where it's going. Mm -hmm. So like in, in this context, for instance, like say I'm trying to create a sound environment for an installation. If I'm posting it online to share what I've done, I would make an MP3 because that just uploads and downloads and streams more easily or if I'm collaborating with someone on bad internet or something like that. Mm -hmm. But in the actual like exhibition context, especially if it's, uh, you know, PA yeah, if you're, if you're being, if you're like, here's the professional display, I would have the WAV file just because it's that much better. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah.
MP4. MP4. It's usually it's usually video. It can be audio. And once you yeah. I like get some um, uh, video poem, sometimes I'll, but I recorded it, but it was the woman I was working with, she actually put it together. So mm -hmm. I was just trying to find stuff because I thought we had any formats and what we had to find the same. So that's what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's the MP4 in the end? Um, MP4s are useful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're touching on a really nerdy subject here with file types, but basically there's basically two levels to a file type. There's the core, like what the actual file programming software is, and then you have what's called a wrapper. And um, the file type that you see at the end of a file, um, unless I'm sorely mistaken, that it depends on what wrapper you're using. Um, and the wrapper basically tells the computer um, whether to like, how to process what's inside of the wrapper. Um, this doesn't, this isn't really super relevant here, except when doing digital media, it is very useful to understand that not all file types, even if it's the same file type, means the same thing, because there's things like bit rate, codec, depth, um, uh, there, there's lots of factors that go into a file type. So in, in this context, just exporting as an MP3 or WAVE and using its default suggested settings, that's great. But um, the more into this you get, especially if you're getting into more complicated media types like um, 3D animation or um, or 3D modeling or video rendering and that kind of thing, it can be very useful to be able to control these little things. I to correct myself, it's AVI. Yeah, yeah. AVI, mm -hmm. it's, I, it's hard to use on anything but VMA Windows. Music. <laughs> there is, I think VMA is a file type. What? Unless I'm mistaken, no, it's WMA, that's a file type. Mm -hmm. So that's like a, that's from Windows Movie Maker, I think, if I'm not. No, it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean, the point of this workshop is to mostly kind of show you what's out there. So at this point, um, we don't have a lot of time, but it should be enough to kind of dip our toes in. And I don't mind staying a little late if you guys wanna kind of work a little longer. Um, so if you go up to file and import, you can bring in any audio you want, um, or you can drag, click and drag from your computer into Audacity. And there's audio files in there, or, um, or you can, find stuff to download. And in the handout, I have a couple, um, where's my other cards here? Is it this way? It's this way. In my handout, I have a little, there's tips, kind of overview of what different useful effects are. And here's some places to get audio. Um, archive.org is basically a open source archive of lots of different types of files. It's, it's insane. It's a big old rabbit hole. Um, you can get stuff from YouTube. Freesound.org is a user submitted place to download audio for free. And um, Wikimedia Commons is 
like the sort of it's the media side of Wikipedia where you can look at all the freely available files that you like see on Wikipedia pages and stuff like that. I have taken the WikiHow page for how to love and turned it into an iron file and it's still free. So I want to just yeah, first. Actually, I'll leave that up because I think we're at a point where I can just sort of run around to your computers. Okay. So I just like blank, blank. This what I've got is with the Cindy sound. I've got your tracks there. So I need just to keep that here. So you want to start a new project? Yeah. So you'll go up to file and click on new. And I just put the return. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes. That's what you want. Okay. So so you can either click and drag stuff into it, or you can go to file on the left mm -hmm. and just go down to import and click on audio. It's an audio file. Or okay. And so like the audio I was using is in. Hmm. Actually, you might be able to go to that drop down uh, where it says, you know, right there. This is a little arrow. Oh, it's, yeah. Okay, no, it's not how I was doing this. Okay, just yeah. go to your desktop. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, yeah, no, but, but this is now for now. Kind of like, you know, like, um, okay, so on your desktop, um, be interesting just to take one of my, one of, that's the one of my problems. I'm like, okay, yeah. Just the code and see what the so if you want to do that. If you want to do that, you want to click the cancel and go to the raw audience. So. Okay, so um file no yeah, new sorry, import. <laughs> well, yeah. File names. How are you guys doing? Yes, and that's one is and uh are we doing okay there, Brenda? Um yes, I think so. Um maybe while you're doing the walk around, would you mind muting so that I could hear the audio on my end better? <laughs> oh yes. Um
All right, so technically speaking, we're done. So people can take off as they want, but I'm happy to hang out for a little bit if people are still keeping busy or want to uh, ask questions or whatever. So, ta-da! <laughs> Awesome. Thanks so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.